So far you've created all the formulae and functions except for the total payment. Now on face value you can look at the total payment and think well it's just going to be the total payment from B8. Of course it will need to be B$8 because we're going to be copying it down. I'll tell you for nothing it's not going to be that but we'll copy it down and see. In case you're wondering why I'm using four decimal places, I'm just checking to make sure that everything has been rounded correctly. So you can see that all over here I've got four decimal places showing. And it's because I just want to make sure that everything's rounding down. Uh, it's very easy to make a, a rounding error. So uh, do, do do that. Increase your decimal places to four. Obviously before you print, you put them back to two decimal places again. Well, if we have a look, everything looks fine so far until we get down to here. And it's at this point, at payment number 20, where we suddenly go into a negative ending balance. And that's because there was only £2.26 plus an interest of 5p, so that's £2.31. There was only £2.31 left to pay. And yet we still paid the total payment of £1,076. Whereas as this was going to be our last payment, we only needed to pay £2.31. And if we'd have paid £2.31, I'll just type it in for now, we'd have had an ending balance of zero. So what we need to do is we need to ask the question each time. And the question needs to be, is the starting balance plus the interest, is that going to be less than the total payment? If it's less than the total payment, then we only need to pay that amount of money, the starting balance plus the interest. Otherwise, we just carry on and pay the total payment as normal. So let's start again. And this time we're going to use an if function because we're going to ask the question, if, you know, see so my recently used items because we've used it recently, if. So we're going to ask if the starting balance plus the interest is less than the total payment. So if what we've got to pay is less than what we're due to pay, then we only need to pay what we've got to pay, which is the starting balance plus the interest. But if it's not less, then it means that we need to still pay the total payment, which will be B8. Now I'll click on OK here. There is going to be a mistake if I start copying it down. You'll see it just messes up completely. And that's because our B8 keeps changing to B9. So we need to make those absolute row references there. So we'll put a dollar in front of the number 8. And now we'll copy it down. Now it's certainly working for the first few so far. Big question is going to be, does it work towards the end? And it does. Because look, it's determined here that there was only £2.31 left to pay. It was less than the total payment, so it's put that in. That then means that our ending balance is zero. Now every time it looks at it now, it says, well, there's nothing to pay. So because there's nothing to pay, because it's less than that, it puts in zero all the time. And our cumulative interest stays the same. So before we finish, we're just going to make sure that everything is down to two decimal places. It's probably not going to let me do it. I'll have to put everything up to four decimal places first and then bring it back down again. Okay, so that is our model completed for the leasing model.